All right. Um, so this is another video in the set where I'm showing just some other data science tools um, that we can use other than um, R. Although again, I like R a lot. I think R is a very powerful tool. Um, when I helped make this class, you know, I built the class around R because I think it is a good tool. Um, anyway, this uh, video is about a tool called Gapminder. So let me start by just going right to it. Now, Gapminder is an online tool. Um, it has a, a software program called uh, Google Trendalyzer underneath it, but Gapminder is the most uh, popular instance of that tool. And uh, Gapminder is specifically a nonprofit group that's interested in public health. So um, let me start uh, just by showing you what I have here. And if you go right to the Gapminder page, you can actually get this uh, pretty quickly and easily um, to see. So in any case, um, each country is a bubble. The size of the bubble is the population of the bubble. The color is the continent or the region. Um, so I'm going to actually change it from five, five regions to six. So rather than being straight continents, I'm going to make North Africa and the Middle East um, a separate uh, set of bubbles. So you can see here, maybe unsurprisingly, that there's definitely a bit of a linear relationship between income and life expectancy. It's actually not a perfect linear relationship because this is actually a log scale. Notice that each jump here is double the income rather than, um, you know, a regular linear scale. Um, as you go along here, you can see that big bubble in the Americas is the United States. And um, I just want to show you a few of the things you can do with a visualization tool like this. So um, right before I turned the video on, I just typed in Korea. So here is North Korea and South Korea. And certainly, um, you're unsurprised to learn that in general, South Korea is wealthier with longer life expectancies than North Korea. Um, but what I want to do is I want to, um, actually, I'm going to uncheck that for a second. Um, and I'm going to back us up because the other cool thing is the way this graph is animated over time. So I'm going to back up here to 1934. Now, 1934, both North and South Korea were uh, occupied by Japan. Um, and, and in fact, in 1934, North Korea was slightly wealthier and healthier than South Korea. Now, of course, we know a little bit about what's going to happen here in history. So I'm going to just turn on the animation and I have it set so that it's going to uh, kind of keep some lines here. So as we go along, um, remember the first thing that's going to come up here is World War II. And of course, neither country is uh, kept very safe through that. So let's watch just for the first uh, decade or so. Okay, so you can see that both countries have a big drop in income, although not really a huge in drop in life expectancy. Um, then we can see that the two start to go off their own ways because before this time, they're actually treated as sort of two uh, regions of a single uh, occupied country. Uh, before the Japanese occupation, they were a single kingdom. Then, of course, the Korean War is coming right here. And again, that won't be so good for either of them. And you can see how their life expectancies just drop as a result of that war in 1951 and 1952. Now, um, by 1954, the area is somewhat stabilized. Again, stabilized is a relative term. But by that point, it's pretty well cemented that South Korea is supported by the United States and by Europe. It becomes, um, with some hiccups, a Western style country. Um, by the 80s, it's sort of a full democracy with elections and um, a modern economy, and that's where sort of the Korea tiger comes up um, and, you know, things like Samsung and uh, those kind of things. North Korea, on the other hand, stays as a communist dictatorship supported by China and Russia at different degrees over different times. So let's see what happens to those two countries after 1954. Again, they're very close to each other right now, and you can see that North Korea gets healthier, but South Korea gets wealthier. And over time, this becomes sort of ridiculously different. So that we can now see pretty quickly how those two changes occur. Okay, so with that visualization tool, I can sort of quickly tell a pretty quick story pretty well. I'm going to back up here to um, 1920 again. And again, there are two big countries in uh, Asia to talk about. One is China, 
in the other one here is India, which at this time was marked as South, uh, South Asia. Um, okay, so again, in uh, 1922, the two countries are pretty equal in size. India is a little bit wealthier. Remember, it's still a British uh, territory, a colony. Um, China is also very British influenced. Um, but anyway, I'll just let you watch what happens here. And again, here come the Japanese. Um, and now there's the Maoist revolution in China. They work very much on health, but not very much on income. Um, then in the 90s, uh, kind of the Chinese revolution comes. And now very quickly, you can see how China uh, really does move up the scale. And again, this is a logarithmic scale. So even though the dots aren't super far apart, this is almost double the per person um, income between the two. Um, again, you can see there are different troubles at different parts in the history about, um, you know, certainly India's war with uh, Pakistan in the uh, 40s and the 50s has trouble. Um, China has its own issues, but you can see how over time the two countries uh, do that. And again, this isn't a class on global development. This is a class on uh, data uh, science, but we can very quickly and easily see what's going on in those. Um, so you can go right to this site. You can either download a tool to have on your own computer or you can upload your own data to this. Um, if you um, were trying to lose a day, it would be easy to spend a whole day looking at the Gapminder tools. Again, this trendalizer is the um, <clears throat> most obvious uh, tool. So um, what I want you to do right now is go ahead and pause this video. And in another video, I'd like you to open up um, this TED Talk of Hans Rosling. It's from 2009, so it's over a decade old. And he's going to explain the AIDS crisis from the 1980s and 90s uh, using the Gapminder software. The software is actually a little bit fancier now than it was 10 years ago. Um, but I think what you'd be able to see is um, that Hans Rosling not only is a great statistician, but he's a great presenter. And as we think about how we talk about data science, it's important to remember that while doing good analysis is important, having really awesome conclusions is actually better. So go ahead and run this video and pause this, and then I'll wait uh, till you come back. This video takes about 10 minutes. Okay, so in the comments below, I ask you uh, to comment on um, this talk. Did you learn anything about AIDS? Did you learn anything about global health? Um, what did you see in the way he presents? Now, the other assignment that's connected to Gapminder is I ask you to use either the Gapminder tool yourself or one of the related tools down here, and I'll show you a couple of them here in the rest of this video, and just play with it a little bit and write a little one-page a thing, maybe get a picture or a screenshot that shows what it does. Now, there are several different uh, things going on here. Population pyramid um, is one that shows how uh, different countries have people of different ages. Again, that's probably not uh, super uh, interesting to look at, but um, this idea of how population uh, changes over time, I think can be something that you could look at. Um, you can look at how different variables change over time. So again, you could do a comparison like I did between North and South Korea. Uh, this is the income per capita, again, on that same log scale over time. We watched China and I showed you North and South Korea. But you can see how the different countries had these different things going on. You can see how the Russian Revolution had an impact. You can see how World War II and then uh, the um, Mao's Revolution, um, how that really uh, messed up China for a while, but then how they had a really meteoric surge uh, going on. Um, you can also see how they still have a way to go. Of course, China has different regions where the incomes are very different. You can see how the fall of the Soviet Union affected Russia and uh, similar. So anyway, you're just going to use one of these tools to try to make um, some meaning. And again, just a little one page description of what you found. The last tool I want to mention is part of the Gapminder organization is called Dollar Street. Now, Dollar Street is a totally a uh, picture-driven tool. So the idea is that for people in different countries at different income levels, they went and they took pictures of just a variety of different things. So these are divided into four quarters um, by income. Um, these are monthly income. So people here, this is a family that would have, you know, $120,000 a year if you're thinking of it that way. 
um, here in Lebanon, this city, this family would have $800 a month, so about $10,000 a year, about $2,000 a year, and several hundred dollars a year. And what you can see, I think, looking at families is both the similarities of the people, the similarities of, you know, what family is, but the differences in how they're living. And what's cool about Dollar Street is that you can go in and they actually took hundreds of photos um, to look at different situations. So for instance, one um, here that's sort of um, interesting is toothbrushes. So most of us in the Western world, most of us in developed countries, we think about a toothbrush as a pretty particular thing. It's a plastic thing. It has uh, bristles. We use it and then we throw it away. But what might be a little bit surprising is that people all over the world have almost the exact same toothbrushes. And even here, the families that only have $27, they don't really have a bathroom of their own. They still have toothbrushes that for the most part look modern. If you scroll down though, you'll see a few people who are below that line who don't have a toothbrush at all. So he uses his finger or a stick um, as their toothbrush. But pretty much here, even those making $100 a month, families living on $100 a month, still have modern toothbrushes. And again, you could use this site and just tool around. You could compare certain countries. Um, you could compare certain things um, to look at. And again, what Hans Rosling and the Gapminder Foundation's point is, is that in lots of ways we're very similar and the ways that we're not are um, fairly cosmetic. So again, he's making uh, sort of a bigger point. And again, this is a graphical representation. What you see is that rich people around the world have beds that look pretty much the same as uh, beds all around the world. And down here at the lower level, um, we see how they make do with what they have. So again, the assignment that's separate from uh, this big idea video is for you to just tool around on one of these Gapminder tools um, and see what you can uh, learn. So, okay, thanks.